thank you so much, Josh. And it's uh, great that we have such a uh, session uh, today to be able to also mirror some of the things that Karsten has said and what we're doing in the Office for Life Sciences in Sweden. We have uh, so many similarities and abilities uh, to build uh, for the future together uh, with the different challenges and new opportunities that we will be facing. Uh, so uh, at the same time as the Office for Life Sciences was started up in Denmark, we also launched the Office for Life Sciences in Sweden. And uh, we've had a national coordinator for life sciences, which is my role since two and a half years uh, ago. Uh, and we've had this role for the past five years uh, because the government has had a strong focus uh, on life sciences for decades, basically, and really increased a lot of the in, uh, investments and focus on the sector with this new way of working uh, with the National Coordinator for Life Sciences. But uh, with the Office for Life Sciences, uh, we came into a new uh, way of operating this. Uh, and uh, different from the Danish Office for Life Sciences, uh, this is an office which is cross-ministerial within government. So I report to uh, all the three ministers that are really basically uh, responsible for uh, life sciences within the Swedish government. Of course, the Minister of Enterprise and Innovation and Minister of Research and Higher Education, but also, and most, uh, first and foremost, basically, Minister of Health and Social Affairs. Um, so we take a very holistic view on the whole uh, life science business in Sweden. And my mission is really to coordinate policy development and set the um, priorities and coordinate activities uh, around Sweden, of course, but also in international collaboration, uh, which makes this so timely uh, because we do have some uh, uh, challenges ahead. Uh, so, and as we all know, the focus on life science has been strong, but from the general public, not as visible at ha as it has become uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, during this uh, period of time. It's really the unprecedented, uh, the uh, research packages that we see now uh, launched from basically all the Nordic uh, countries, uh, the Swedish uh, uh, restart package. Uh, the, the framework has been uh, communicated, uh, not the context so far, but already starting from March, the Research Council and the Innovation Agency launched new measures uh, to support both uh, innovation and R&D uh, for and with the COVID uh, activities. Um, there has been a scope, uh, uh, in increased scope from, from the public investor, Alme Invest, to be an active investor in, in innovative companies. But uh, first and foremost, uh, the uh, public debate has been a lot on uh, how we cope uh, with COVID as a whole. And uh, we've seen completely new modes of collaboration uh, where the, perhaps the uh, normally so sort of slow uh, public sector has been able to adapt the really fast and decisive actions uh, within this uh, uh, during the pandemic and during the crisis and i think that that is really something uh, for us to uh, foster for the future uh, we've really seen examples of truly data-driven decision making which we also need to keep uh, for the future and uh, what I think that has been uh, most important for life sciences as a whole is that it has been so uh, visible to the general public how important this industry is to uh, society, uh, that we do produce ventilators, biotech production uh, and pharmaceuticals in Sweden and in the Nordics for, uh, for, the, global, uh, for the global needs, basically. Uh, but uh, we've had the we have a long-standing tradition in the Nordics of uh, being strong in life sciences, and the figures for for Sweden uh, as in terms of export is not as big as in Denmark, but still uh, pharma and medtech alone constitutes of at least seven percent of Swedish uh, the total Swedish export, um, and that was in 2018. Uh, 
last year, 2019, the, the increase in pharma export was already uh, 20%. So becoming more and more um, important to the uh, to this to Swedish society in terms of exports uh, also and this these figures do not include biotech for example the company Cytiva formerly uh, GE Healthcare they constitute uh, uh, at least one percent of Swedish uh, total exports alone and of course uh, during the uh, during the period January to June uh, we have seen a tremendous increase in uh, uh, pharma exports uh, due to, to uh, COVID. Prior uh, to the uh, uh, just just before uh, for the uh, pandemic uh, really took off uh, here in Europe and the, in the Nordics, the uh, Industry Association Sweden Bio uh, made a study of our pipeline, and it's interesting to see the comparison between the pipeline. Uh, report uh, made four years ago. We definitely have seen an uh, increase in the pipeline report uh, in clinical uh, phase by 10%. And uh, what is so good that we have really seen an increase in the later stages, uh, especially in stage three studies, uh, phase three studies uh, by 40%. Uh, but the, of course, this sector is under um, strong transformation uh, and that was also extremely visible, uh, has been during the pandemic now, uh, the usability of new digital tools. We see the health tech business is really, really taking off. Uh, but moreover, for the past five years uh, in Sweden, we have worked for an uh, ecosystem for competitive intelligence, uh, where we really see new types of collaborations uh, between uh, uh, businesses, small, medium-sized, and large businesses. Examples are the AstraZeneca BioVenture Hub, the Testa Center Testbed for development of uh, production and processes for biologics. Of course, we rely on the uh, research and infrastructure backbones uh, from ESS and MAX4 uh, that are uh, coming uh, for the future. But sincerely, of course, uh, the uh, research infrastructure that we have in SciLife Lab that has also enabled uh, the nationwide precision diagnostics network of uh, genomics medicine Sweden. Uh, and not at least to mention uh, the new type of uh, collaborations that are really um, cross sectorial. We see the super convergence between sectors as uh, for example, automotive and life sciences industry working together, building uh, capacity for data-driven innovation. Uh, and one example of this collaboration is AI innovation of Sweden. And I mentioned this palette because that is sort of the um, holistic and long-term perspective uh, that we put on life sciences in Sweden. So the Swedish uh, strategy is really around uh, health prosperity and uh, gaining new knowledge with a focus on uh, precision, prevention and sustainability. And I think that uh, Denmark here is really also leading the way of looking at the, the, uh, the, the new uh, industry assignments on, uh, on, on really creating a sustainable uh, future. And this is definitely something that we have to offer for the world. This uh, Swedish life sciences strategy was launched in uh, December last uh, year. It seems like ages ago, uh, but the uh, framework is still very much valid, uh, not only during uh, COVID, but also uh, as a modus uh, to uh, restart uh, society. So uh, we will rely on new structures for uh, for collaboration, uh, where we definitely need uh, there's a need for new partnerships uh, between healthcare regions, of course, but also between the healthcare regions and the government. We have great opportunities for collaboration within the Nordics, uh, with our 20 million people uh, as. Uh, as a basis, uh, we are the world's 12th largest uh, economy and uh, a focus for the Nordic uh, Ministry of Councils is also uh, health and life sciences for the future. The second area and uh, 
the same as in, in the Danish uh, strategy, uh, we need to unlock the potential for the usability of health data to really use the registered data, the biobanks uh, that we have and the patient reported uh, data and enable uh, real world evidence in uh, data driven uh, innovation. Um, we need new policy development uh, to implement the uh, new advanced uh, therapies and also to be able to focus investment not only on care but also much more on prevention. Um, and the fourth area is really uh, the largest uh, area where we need to uh, find new ways to integrate research and innovation in delivery of care, uh, which is of course uh, and one way of doing so is really to increase uh, clinical studies, which is also a, one of the targets uh, for the Swedish government, um, where we're really trying to pioneer the introduction of precision medicine in care services. Um, what COVID has also taught us is the uh, uh, tremendous um, ability that we do have to utilize welfare technology and the gains that we see. We've seen so many examples of that during the past months. And um, of course, uh, if we are going to build our strength for the future, we need to rely on uh, both strong and agile infrastructures for research and innovation. But it all boils down to uh, a long-term motive for, uh, for skills supply and uh, talent attraction. And for the international attractiveness, uh, we really need a uh, competitive business environment for both research and development and for growing companies, definitely. Um, and Sweden and, and the Swedish uh, fund, Some Invest, is also a partner of the new uh, e higher fund uh, that has been established uh, and this which export strategy also points at the focus on precision medicine. Uh, so moving forward, uh, the way that we will work uh, with the uh, life sciences strategy in Sweden, uh, we will work on implementation uh, through par partnerships, through our policy development and assignments, of course also through uh, risk sharing and funding. Uh, and hopefully through an, uh, a bit more uh, continuously more agile way. I have an advisory board uh, connected to the Office for Life Sciences, which has a broad spectrum of uh, both from the uh, business side, from the uh, from academia, from healthcare, and from the research side, but also, of course, from the professions and from the patient uh, side. And the advisory board also are forming task forces uh, to be able to move uh, some of these key areas forward. Uh, not at least uh, the last area, uh, building uh, resilience and uh, uh, the sort of comeback uh, to uh, economic growth uh, from, from COVID. So with that, uh, I will end the presentation and I hope that we can get a good discussion uh, going.